If one day you find out that you only have six months to live, what would you do? What makes you feel alive? Where do we get loose in the same grind of daily life, and what helps us find ourselves again in those moments? Hello, how are you feeling today? In today's UMC Students podcast, I, Hisu Kim, will introduce the movie Living. And take the time to talk about film with listeners. First, let's take some time for a quick overview of the movie Living. Living is a 2022 British drama film directed by Oliver Harmonus from a screenplay by Kazu Ishiguro, adapted from the 1952 Japanese film Ikiru, directed by Akira Kurosawa. Which in turn was partly inspired by the 1886 Russian novella The Death of Ivan Illich by Leo Tolstoy. Set in 1953 London, it depicts a bureaucrat in the country public works department facing a fatal illness. In Living, Bill Nye delivers a no perfect lead performance as Mr. Rodney Williams. Additionally, Amy Lowood as Miss Marlora Harris and Alex Sharp as Mr. Peter Wakelin contribute to the film with their outstanding chemistry alongside Bill Nye. Now, let's get a little deeper to know the plot of Living. In this story, there are two protagonists and the story goes on two perspectives. The new employee, Wakelin, and his boss, Williams at the public works. The movie starts with Wakelin's perspective, his first day at City Hall. On the gloomy morning, Wakelin steps onto the platform, where the people, dressed in grey and wearing bleak expressions, stand. He greets his colleagues, but their responses are chilly, indicating discomfort with his attempts at humor. While nervously sitting on the train, Wakelin encounters his boss, Mr. Williams, who looks pale as a ghost. As Wakelin enters the office, he finds his desk piled high with documents like skyscrapers. Miss Harris, his new co worker, tells Wakelin to consider himself very fortunate because if skyscrapers aren't really tall, people will suspect you of not having anything very important to do. Mr. Williams picks up one document from his own skyscrapers. And asks, why is bag in our department when it should be in another? A colleague tells him that the other department insisted the document belongs to our department, not to them. Mr. Williams then answers, then we can keep it here for now, it'll do no harm. Three ladies enter the office holding a document suggesting the creation of a playground. Wakelin receives an order to assist them in submitting the document to other department and follows the ladies. Despite Wakelin's attempt to help, he finds himself being brushed off in every department, with everyone claiming it's not their job. Eventually, they return to his department. Upon their return, Mr. Williams puts the documents on his desk again, saying, Then we can keep it here for now. It'll do no harm. Now the movie's perspective shifts to William's side. Williams continues to check his watch and announces that he needs to leave early today. He exits the office and heads to the hospital. The doctor gives him only six months. After returning home, he attempts to confide in his son and daughter in law, 
but they avoid the conversation, since they were making disparaging remarks about living with their father. Sitting in darkness, Williams reminisces about his son's childhood and his younger days when he loves his wife. The next day, Williams doesn't show up to work. Instead, he has to a seaside where he encounters a troubled young man who couldn't sleep. Williams offers him the sleeping pills he had bought. Seeing the lethal dose of sleeping pills from Williams' bag and hearing about his limited six-month lifespan, the young man takes Williams out to explore bars and nightlife. However, Williams finds it not enjoyable at all. Unaccustomed to nightlife, and with his body already deteriorating, Williams struggles to indulge in alcohol and the night, but soon gives up. Williams returns to London, but still doesn't go to work. There, he encounters Miss Harris, who asks him for a reference. At the restaurant, Miss Harris tells Williams that the nickname she named for him was Mr. Zombie because he was alive the same death. A few days later, Williams goes to the movies and a game center with her. As she prepares to go home, Williams has dates, but then asks for just one drink and opens up about his story. He confesses that he was once a young boy who admired gentlemen in suits and hats, but now he feels like he's lost himself and is living like a zombie. How did it happen? He tells her that he's afraid of his life becoming nothing, but waiting for it to end. Miss Harris is moved to tears by his story, and Williams, with newfound clarity, apologizes for keeping her so long and accompanies her home with a relieved expression, as if he has realized something significant. From here, the perspective shifts back to Wakeling's side. Mr. Williams didn't come to work for a few weeks. People were annoyed. Things didn't get settled. But one day, Mr. Williams suddenly came back to work. From that day, Mr. Williams changed a lot. Right after coming back to work, he looked for the document about the playground, which the three ladies brought at Wakeling's first day of work. Mr. Williams went all the departments himself, carrying it and handling the work directly. He even didn't hesitate to make conflicts, to pursue the task, and so every other size in person and shook their hand. Also, even back to make it. Before so long, right after construction is finished, Mr. Williams passed away from illness. On the train ride back after his funeral, his colleagues pledged to emulate Mr. Williams, vowing not to revert their former bureaucratic ways and do their jobs properly. However, over time, their pledge became faint and things went back as it had before. Wakeling opens the letter left by Mr. Williams. In the letter, Mr. Williams describes their playground as one of many small things, and like all other small things do, it would eventually be swept away by everything else. Mr. Williams urged Wakeling to remember the little playground they had created when he felt lost. 
visiting the playground, Wakeling meets a police officer who tells him that he saw Mr. Williams shaking the swing in the snow, singing the Scottish folk song, the Rowan Tree, just before he died. The officer feels guilty for leaving Mr. Williams out in the cold in his condition. Wakeling comforts the officer, saying that Mr. Williams was probably happier in that moment than he had been in a long time. So, that was the part of living. What are your thoughts on the movie? Do you have any questions? Or do you have any opinions to share with? Please give us a comment on newmcpodcastlive.com and share your insights. We are looking forward to receiving your feedback. We'll be back after the short commercial break. Welcome back everyone. So, we got some comments about the film. Let's check it out together. A comment from Oh, it takes forever to write in English. Why were the protagonists sad as the two people? Oh, this is actually a real good question. Well, my thought on that question is the movie through the perspective of Wakelin on his first day at the office easily depicts the appearance of the city hall to us without well verbose explanations. Through the contrast and similarity between the two characters, it shows our appearance when we first joined the company. Um, our appearance after some time has passed. They are two person, but I think they're symbolically one person changing through time. The next comment is from I miss my doggo. Why did Mr. Williams went back into work and acted in different way when his life was nearing its end? And why did it make him feel alive? Hmm. To ponder this, I consider the song Ruined Tree as a symbol. In the bar where he sought refuge from his life, he attempts to sing the Ruined Tree, his old favorite song. But he falters at my mother, oh, I see her still. Um, couldn't sing the song to the end, but in the final scene, on a cold winter night, singing on the swing, he sings it with a contented expression, no more feeling shame to himself. My thought is that this signifies that only when we remain true to ourselves, can we truly be alive? And the last comment is from, okay, I guess I'm almost done with that. At the end of the movie, on the train returning after Mr. Williams' funeral, everyone vows not to put things off, but eventually things go back to usual. What is the significant, sorry, what is the significance of putting that scene in the movie? Actually, I was a little disappointed. Oh, yeah, it could be. Well, my opinion about the scene is that the scene is indicating that we can't live each day as if we will die tomorrow. Just as the Mr. Williams is an 
ordinary man who has adopted to absurdity. For a long time, other people who adapt to absurdity are also ordinary people who often wish and try not to adopt, but that, yeah, and this is how we are. I feel like it leaves us with the question, the movie leaves us with the question to think about what we can do for ourselves. If we were to find an answer to the question in the movie, it might have come as a feeling of doubt rather than comfort to those of us who adopted to daily life, which is almost like all of us. But instead of giving us answer, adding the movie like that, it tells us that it is our job to find the answer on our own life. And it's okay even we sometimes lose ourselves. So, thank you for comments. We really had nice questions today. Thank you all. What do you think the life is? Sometimes we face the same situation we've been through, make same mistakes even we don't want to. Same grinding days, days we disappoint about ourselves, days we lose ourselves. What can we do in the days like it? Well, life is such an odd thing, isn't it? We must face similar disappointment again, again, during our lifetime. That's why I call those days seasons. But remember, while seasons come back and go every year, they never stay in the same, in a real totally same way. In every spring, we see flowers and leaves which look alike from last year's, but actually all different. Like the flowers and leaves do, nothing comes in the right same figure, even it looks same. That's why we should not give up, even we face the same disappointments and just be true to ourselves. So everyone, it's okay. It's okay even though you're not okay right now or at all. I hope all of us can face the next season, even it isn't the way, the shape we hoped. Have a good day. Hope you can enjoy or endure your own season. Thank you for listening. It was Hitu Kim from UMC Podcast again. See you later.